So I'm making several different kinds of flowers for this project and the first kind is kind of a stacked flower and there's three different versions because there's three different types of petals in the dies that you can see I'm holding up here. Now this long one is an older one called Tattered Flower Garland and this Thinlets is a newer one, Small Tattered Florals. They're very similar. They have these kind of layers that you can use to make flowers. One of the big differences is that the older one comes when it makes the uh, cuts the dies it puts a little hole in the center that you can use to thread onto your skewer. The, this one does not so you'll have to make a hole with the, your awl in order to thread them onto the skewer. So let's see how these come together. I've got one set here to make one of the flowers and I'm just going to start by taking some dye. I'm using uh, peacock feathers on this one. And I'm just going to go around the petals for each of these and I'll do that on the front and back for all of the individual petals. Next I'm going to use a ball tool just to give these a little bit of shape and what I usually do, and I'm no expert at doing flowers, but I go from the top side, the pattern paper side, and I just kind of roll the ball around in the tops of each petal and then I turn it over and just make a little indent there and that gives me kind of a, a nice little kind of shape to my flower. So I do that for all of them except for this tiny little one I just kind of roll it around. Next I'll use my awl to poke a hole in the center of the flower and I have kind of a bigger awl here. I won't use it to go all the way up, but I am going to make a decent size hole in the center here. Now obviously the size of your hole will depend on the size of the skewer uh, that you're using to as the stem of your flower. So now I've poked all of my holes and I've got a skewer here. This started out as a natural wood skewer and I just used a green marker on it to make it green. And I'm going to see how many petals I have for this one. I have about five. So I'm going to come down, oh, about an inch and a half or so to put my first petal on. And I'm just going to put some glue around that location on the skewer. And once I have that band of glue on, I'll just slide my first petal down the, the dowel until it hits that spot. Now if you need to increase the size of your hole in order to get it to slide easily, go ahead and do that. Once you have the first petal on, just kind of move up a little bit. I moved up about, oh, maybe three-eighths of an inch and I put another little band of glue on and I'll slide the next biggest flower on. And when I put these on, I'll just make sure that the petals get a little offset from layer to layer. And I'll repeat that for the other two larger petals. And when I get to the top one, I'm not worried about where the point is on this skewer because I'm going to cut it off, but I'll just slide this down about as far as it can go. And then I'll set that aside to dry. Now once the flower is thoroughly dry, I'll just bring in some cutters and nip that top off flush with that top uh, petal. You put your finger on that so that doesn't go flying all around. And you want to have a nice flat place up here. And then you can just take some diamond glaze and find a little piece of bling that you can use for the center of the flower. And then using this same die, I'm going to make some tiny flowers for the window box. I'm just using some of the smaller dies and I've cut these out so that the back part is cut, out, cut with the plain side facing up so that when I layer these, I'll have a nice little contrast there. And so I'll just use my ball tool to form them a little bit and layer them up.
The next kind of tall flower I'm going to make is this kind. And for that, I'm using another Tim Holtz dye. This one is the Tiny Tattered Florals. So I cut this using one of the larger dyes from that um, set of dyes, and I'm just going to give it a little more color by adding some ink on here. And I'll go all the way around. Now this is the die that comes with the quilling tool and at first I'm just going to train this so I've got the quilling tool attached here and I'm just going to wrap it up all the way around just kind of keeping that bottom edge even. There's lots of videos on YouTube on making these flowers. So once I have it all the way wrapped up I'm just going to slide it off of my quilling tool and I've got another one of my skewers. This time I'm going to put the flower up at the flat end and the pointy end is at the opposite side. And I'll just unroll this a little bit. And I'll put some glue for about the first half inch or so here. I'm just going to let that get a little tacky. And once that's a little tacky I'm going to attach that to the top of my stick here. Just hold it very tight on there and wrap that first half inch around, making sure it's good and attached. Sorry, my fingers are kind of in the way. Give it a good little pinch there. And then let's set, set that aside for a few minutes to dry. Once this end is dried up here, I'm going to add some glue around the rest of this. Now I know people use other methods to do this. This is just a method that I've found works for me. So I've put glue around that entire kind of line there. And I'll just wait a few seconds and let that get a little tacky. Now once that glue is tacky, I'll start rolling that up. I'm not trying to make it super tight. I'm just trying to go around until I get it all wrapped up or close to the end. Once I'm close to the end, I have something like this. And I'm going to just move these petals out of the way for a second and put some glue down inside of here. And then I'll finish wrapping this last one so that it comes around the bottom. Then I'll take my fingers underneath the bottom and just kind of form that. And then I'm holding it down here, pinching it together, and then just bringing the petals down a little bit. They don't have to be perfectly shaped because we can do more shaping once it's dry. I'm kind of looking at the bottom and making sure that everything looks good down here on the bottom. And then I'll let that thoroughly dry. Once that flower is thoroughly dry, I'll just kind of support it from underneath and come in here and hit the edges with some of my ink and get it where I like it to be. I'm also making some smaller flowers, basically the same way. I just have a colored toothpick here it's pointed on both ends, so I'm going to nip off one end so that I get rid of the point. And once I get rid of that point, I've just got one of the smaller dies here. It's kind of one of the medium sized ones, I guess. And I'll roll that up and attach it to the toothpick, just like I did the larger skewer. Next I'll make some leaves for the flowers and I'm again using this small tattered florals die. I'm not using the smallest one but I am using the other three sizes. And depending on the size of the flower, I may use a bigger leaf or a smaller leaf. So that's why I'm making all three sizes. So I'll show you how they come together. Each leaf has both a front and a back and these dies are not symmetrical so when I cut them out no matter which paper I'm using I put the dies on first with them on one side and then on the other side 
and then you can see I'm keeping track of that over here in my little tray and I won't do too many at a time just so that I can keep track of my little pieces here. I have the dies just kind of on a piece of tape because I'm going to be making a lot of these leaves and it's just a lot easier to, to keep them together like this. I'm also I'm fortunate enough to have one of these small die cutting uh, machines so that I don't have to go and get my big die cutter out and I can just put the dies down on here run it through one way and then run it through the other way. To assemble the leaves, no matter what size they are, take one leaf, hold it by the larger end, and just put a little glue down near the tip. You don't want glue to get too close to that larger end because we're going to use that to slide it on to the uh, skewer that's our stem for the flower. So I just push that together and then I've got a little distress ink out here to do the edges. And when we go to put this on the flower, we'll just open up this end that we left unglued and we can put some glue on our stem and put that in whatever position we want. We won't attach them yet because we don't know how tall the flowers will end up being so we don't want to put the leaves in a place where they wouldn't belong. So for now I think I'll make about a dozen of the largest leaves. Remember you need 12 fronts and 12 backs to make a leaf and then I think I'll make about two dozen of the medium size because I may want to put them on the stem with those with the largest ones like that so I'll make two dozen of those and then about a dozen of the smallest leaves and you can use all the same uh, green paper or you can vary the green paper it's totally up to you and then I will not attach any of these leaves I'll just keep them in a safe place until I'm ready to put the project together. I'm making three different sizes of mushrooms out of wood pieces to go on my project and the different pieces that I'm using are all listed in the materials and cutting guide. There are three sizes there's a large mushroom, it's almost an inch and a half tall and about an inch and a quarter wide at the widest part. A medium sized one that's about an inch tall and three quarters wide and then the small one that is about oh, 5 eighths inch wide and about three quarters of an inch tall. Now the small one is just um, consists of one piece so there's nothing to do for that. And each of the other ones there's a little construction and I'm just using some white glue for the medium one the little spool just gets attached to this furniture button and I just center it on the bottom put a little pressure and then allow that to dry and then there's three pieces for the large one there's this half round piece and this is just a wooden checker and I'm centering that on the half round piece on the top of the wooden checker there's kind of a raised part on the ones that I have that that round part will fit exactly on and then this spool, which is a little larger than the spool I used for the medium mushroom, gets glued into the center here on the bottom. I'll let the glue set up on the two pieces I constructed and then I'll prep them with some white gesso. After the gesso is dry, the next step I usually do is to paint the stems and I just have some vintage photo here and I'll just paint the bottom part of all of my mushrooms. 
Next I'm ready to paint the tops of my mushrooms and I've selected three colors of distress paint, bright persimmon, wilted violet, and peacock feathers. You can of course paint your mushrooms any color that you desire. The two larger ones are big enough for my fingers to hold on to them by their stems and then for the smallest one I've just put it onto a clothespin because the stem for it is just too tiny for me to hold on to. So I'll paint the tops of the mushrooms and for the ones that you see up here it did take me two coats to get the kind of coverage that I liked. And then once the paint is dry on the top of the mushrooms if you'd like to have some dots like I have here on these other ones. I just used a Sharpie paint pen or you could use just a brush and make some tiny dots. To go around the base of the watering can I've decided to use some small uh, river pebbles I guess you'd call them and uh, I'll use some of them in their natural color. This is what they look like. They kind of come in a range of colors. And then I'm just taking some of the lighter ones. Here's a couple uncolored. And I just put them in a cup. I have different cups for my different colors. And I put some alcohol inks on them and just kind of shake them around. And then when I have them, what I think is colored enough, you can see I've got a little landing zone here with a piece of paper towel that I can put them out on. And I try to set them down in the uh, orientation that they're going to be on the project. Just kind of move them around a little bit. And if I don't think that color is dark enough, I think this looks pretty good. I can always take a little more of my um, ink and put them on. And then I'll just let them dry. And so the colors that I'm using on the blue ones are Pool and Aqua. And I usually start with the lighter color of each one of these. And on the orange ones, it's Peach Bellini and Sunset Orange. And then on the purple ones, it's Cool Perry and purple twilight just a little of the purple twilight because it's a pretty intense color and so I've just kind of counted out how many uh, pebbles I'll need to go around my project added in a few extra like I said I'm going to keep some of them the natural color and I'll just dye the rest with a variety of the colors To make the little stoop that goes in front of the front door, we have some pieces of medium white chipboard. There's three of those. They're listed underneath the base section. Then there is a piece of joining strip and a piece of uh, stoop side finishing and these are both listed under the cardstock uh, cutting section. To start, we're going to take our front stoop side piece uh, and we're going to cut it into two pieces that are 7 eighths of an inch long and two pieces that are 1 and 7 eighths. They're basically the so length of the sides of our uh, front stoop bottom. So I'll go ahead and cut those pieces. So to join these pieces, we alternate short and long. We'll just use butt joints, and I've got my piece of joining strip here that I've started about halfway down the side of one of my short pieces. And then I'll just use a line on my craft mat to keep this uh, assembly straight. When I get to the end, I'll just cut this off with about a half an inch to spare. I'll give this all a good burnish and then I'll join it together to make a 3D piece. Now that I have my little 3D piece, I'm going to run a bead of glue around the inside at the bottom. Once I have that glue inside there, I'll take my piece labeled front stoop bottom 
and it should fit right inside of there. It may be a little tight with the uh, pieces of uh, joining strip, but it should fit in there and go right to the bottom. And just push that in so that it's flat on the ground. Once I have that bottom piece in, I'm going to take some uh, leftover ledger strips and just cut some pieces that will fit inside each one of these sides. They should come right up to that top edge. Once you have those pieces of ledger strip installed, run a bead of glue around that top edge and then take your top piece and set it in place. And those little ledger strips just help keep the bottom from getting pushed in as we're working on it. So we'll just set this little unit aside to dry for a few minutes. So I'm going to take my strip of side finishing card stock. This is the piece that has the three channels in it. And I'm going to score it at one inch, two inches, four inches, and five inches. This piece will eventually cut it to length, but that's all we need to do for right now is score those places and then we can uh, fold on those scores. So before I put that cardstock on, I've just taken my marker on the corners to give myself a little insurance in case I don't get a nice neat cut when I'm measuring the corners. So next we're going to cover the sides and I've just started by removing some of the backing on just the middle piece of the score tape here. And I'm going to take one of the short sides and I'll center it in that second one inch section there. And then I'll remove some more of the backing and I'll bring it around and center the two inch section there and then just keep coming around I'll put this first side down and then I'll leave this backing on and see how far I need to cut this off in order to make just a butt joint there of that uh, piece of trim now we're going to miter these corners here and I'm going to practice on the bottom side and what I want to do is just come in on each side and cut a 45 degree corner and I'll cut that on all four and then I've removed the score tape backing and I'll just push each one of these into place and then I can give that a good burnish. And now that I've had my practice, I'll repeat this on the top side. And then I have a little unit like this that we can just add some decorative paper to. To finish the stoop, I cut a quarter inch wide strip of the same purple paper that I used for the window frames and wrap that around. I stopped and started back where the seam was on the back side. And then for the top, I've cut a piece that is 7 eighths by 1 and 7 eighths, 7 eighths by 1 and 7 eighths, and I backed it with score tape, and then I'll install that on the top. And then, of course, I'll give everything a good burnish. To make the little paving stones that make the path that go up to the front door, I'm using some lightweight chipboard. There's a piece listed underneath miscellaneous in the cutting guide, and or you can use scraps. And I've just been able to use a little one half inch punch here, or you can use a, a die that can cut through chipboard if you have that. And I've just cut these. Um, there's no adhesive or anything on them. And then for the pattern paper to go on the front, I've backed a strip with some score tape and then I use the same punch to cut them out and then I'll just remove the backing 
and attach pattern paper to one of the little chipboard circles. And once I burnish that on, I'll use my vintage photo ink to go around the edges. Now, because I'm just using this punch, I had to do it in two stages. If you have a die that will uh, go through thicker materials, you may be able to adhere the pattern paper to the lightweight chipboard first and then make that um, cut. But frankly, I think it's a lot faster just to use the punch than a die. But suit yourself. And I've made about 24 here, which I think will be uh, long enough for my path. And if not, I'll just make a few more. For the grass, I'm going to cut two 12 inch long strips of green paper. This is actually from the uh, Patterns and Solids. And my die for grass is about an inch tall. And I want to have a, uh, a quarter of an inch underneath the the grass. So I'm going to cut this strip I think about an inch and a half and then I'll be able to trim back to that. So I'll just run this through twice on this strip and then I'll run it through on another strip so that I'll have two pieces. So now that I've cut my strip here, and I'm sorry it's a little hard to see on this green, I'm taking and lining it up on my craft mat so that the underside of the grass that where it cuts down to is lined up with one of the lines on my craft mat and then I'll just use my ruler to cut it off a quarter of an inch below that um, that line. So now I have two pieces of grass I'll just do a little inking on that and I'm going to use this to go around the base of the watering can. To attach the grass to the base of the watering can, we will need the two strips of medium weight chipboard that are called grass backing strip. They're underneath the base section in the cutting guide. They're just little 1 8 inch strips of um, medium weight cardstock that have been backed with score tape. And I'm going to take my green marker and color the narrow edges, the top and the bottom. So these little strips of chipboard are going to go along the bottom edge of the watering can before we put the grass on. And it just gives a nice shadow line to the grass so that it's not right up against the watering can. You of course can just put the grass right up against the watering can if you so desire. So I'm going to ignore this front facade for now and just put pieces on the other sides and I'll just probably put them about the same length as the decorative paper and they can go um, very close to the bottom. You can attach them right to the bottom of that decorative paper. Now for whatever reason a couple of these smaller pieces have wanted to delaminate on me so I'm just pulling them apart and running a little bead of glue in between there and putting them back together. Now for the front, we won't put any underneath the door or to the right of the door and we'll put the piece that's going to come along the left side of the door, we'll stop it a half an inch short, short of where the door frame is. And then I'll give all those pieces a good burnish and check to make sure that I didn't have any other uh, delamination. Next I've prepped the back bottom edge of my grass with some quarter inch score tape. And I'm just going to start with one side and I've peeled back the backing a little bit. And you would do this flat on your table holding it up in front of the the watering can. I'm just going to get it started up here so that you can see. This edge is going to come right to the edge of the frame and then we'll just slowly wrap around. Take your time as you go around these corners so that you get a nice fit and then burnish that in place. 
Next I'll take my second strip and line it up with the other side of the door frame here and I'm keeping the, just removing the tape backing as I need it and I'll again go around until I get to the back where I can see where I need to cut it off. Once I get around to the back here I still have my backing on the score tape I'll determine where to cut it off and then I'll ink that edge and fasten it down. And there's our grass installed.